Today I'm sharing how I skim coat my walls to get a nice and smooth surface before painting them. When I moved into this house years ago, I removed the old wallpaper, revealing these uneven walls underneath. There were divots on the wall where we had removed the old cabinet above the toilet, as well as textural inconsistencies throughout the bathroom. Not knowing what to do at the time, I just patched the walls before priming and painting them. Now that I have a little more experience, it's time to actually smooth them out. For the skim coat, I used plus three lightweight joint compound with a tiny bit of water added, blending it together really well. I'll link the joint compound in the description box as well as everything else that I use in this video. To get these walls started, I took my 10 inch taping knife and scooped out some of the compound and started applying it at the inside corners of the wall. I found that putting the blade into the corner at an angle and then pulling it away from the corner like this helped to get that product all the way to the edge of the wall without it looking like it was squished out into the corner. After I had the edges done in that section, I worked my way down the rest of the wall, applying the skim coat, then going back over it from opposite directions to smooth it out, and then try to blend out any lines. When I'm skim coating, because I'm barely over five foot tall, I use a step ladder, and it's easier for me to work from side to side, working the wet edge from the bottom of each row. But if you're tall enough, you can work each section of the wall from ceiling to the floor, working the wet edge from the side of each section instead of the bottom of it like I am. We have a bulkhead in this bathroom and I applied the skim coat the same way here. When working on the outer corner at the bottom of that bulkhead, I used the knife to pull the product all the way to the edge, building up more compound than it needed, then taking the taping knife from the opposite direction and skimming off the excess material, holding the knife as flush as possible to create that straight edge. I then took the knife from the underside of the bulkhead and did the same thing, removing excess material and forming a sharper corner. I had just skim coat over the popcorn texture on the ceiling and the underside of the bulkhead and let that dry before doing the walls so it would be easier to build up and flatten out these corners. I will link that video down below. When you're done with the first coat, you want to let it dry for a full 24 hours. Once the first coat was dry, I went back in for the second coat. The process for this is pretty much the same as the first, but the second coat always goes on easier and smoother than the first. The first coat filled in most of the divots and the weird texture that the walls had, and the second coat is to make sure I didn't miss anything and to get a smoother finish. I focused on running the taping knife in opposite directions, filling in everything and blending out any lines left from the edge of the blade. You should be trying to hold your blade at an angle whenever you're working the wet edge so that you're not digging the edge of the knife into the wet compound leaving lines but that's kind of a tricky thing to learn how to do properly. So I'm working on holding my blade at an angle, but if I get those lines, I know that I'll be able to go back and smooth them out when I sand everything at the end. I also went back over all of the outside corners and I got those as straight as I could with this second coat. Again, you wanna do the best that you can here. Just remember that you'll be able to fix little flaws when you go back with the sandpaper. When you're done with the second coat, you wanna to let it dry for another full 24 hours. Once it's dry, you can come back in and sand everything down. I used a fine grit sanding sponge to get into the corners, then a handheld and a pole sander with 150 grit drywall sandpaper on the larger surface areas. You want to sand the entire surface while looking for any flaws that need a little bit of extra attention. On the bulkhead, I used the sanding sponge to work on both sides of that outer corner, trying to get them as sharp and smooth as possible. You also want to make sure that when you're sanding that you're wearing a dust mask and goggles. I also like to wear gloves and long sleeves so that the dust doesn't dry out my skin. When you're done sanding, you want to take a damp rag or a drywall sponge and wipe away all of the dust. 
If you have any spots that you've missed or you aren't happy with, you can go back in after the walls are dry and do any touch-ups that are needed. I had bubbles to deal with since I was skimming over a painted surface, which is fairly common, but I covered that in my last video, so if you have a similar issue, you can check that one out. If you do any touch-ups, just make sure that you sand them and wipe them down again afterwards. Now that you've finished skim coating your walls and they are perfectly smooth, they are ready for paint. I will be covering that in my next bathroom makeover on a budget episode when I paint this bathroom to be mold and mildew resistant. If this was helpful, I'd love it if you would hit that like button. And until next time, you can check out one of these videos linked right here.